Good day. So our topic for today is adjusting entries. So what is adjusting entries? Adjusting entries are changes to journal entries you've already recorded. So if you will be able to go over from our last video presentation, there is the trial balance, which has to column the debit and the credit. Then this will now followed by the adjusting entries to what to correct the the unadjusted balance into the adjusted trial balance. So this one also ensure that the revenue recognition and expense recognition principles are followed. So we would explain later what is a revenue recognition and expense recognition principle. This also convert the entity's accounting record to accrual basis of accounting. But what is accrual? Accrual is an accounting assumption that state that revenue and expenses are recorded when earned and incurred rather than when paid. But under the new ruling in the PFRS and IES, it states that the only acceptable accounting method is accrual and not anymore the cash basis. So if you use cash basis accounting, that would now be an accounting error. Okay, next. Matches income and expenses to the appropriate period. And then usually involve one income statement account and one balance sheet account. So let's see if, if that's true. So what is a revenue recognition? Revenue recognition is an accounting guidelines requiring that revenues be shown on the income statement in the period in which they are earned, not in the period when the cash is collected. So if you would see, it's just what? accrual assumption is or accrual accounting is so in short this is figuring out when the business actually earn the revenue rather than when it is paid so an, a good example would be an earning income in our own account which state that the that on february 25 2020 Lay was engaged to render consulting services for LCUP who paid 50000 on cash and service are due on December 30, 2020. Take note, Lay already received cash, 50000 So on February 25, 2020, we would record an entry of debit cash and then credit unearned income. Why unearned? Because we are not yet giving the service. So on December 30, LCUP will have what? will be able to demand for the service they had already paid. So, 225 2020 up to December 1, if no services is being rendered, then it still become an earn and not, and not be reverted to earn. So, when, the, when does the unearned become earned income or revenue? So, that would now call for our adjusting entry. So, here. So, an earned income, so it's, 225 2020 until December 29, 2020, when no services was being rendered. But if the service were already were already rendered on December 30 as agreed, then on December 30, 2020, you will now have to do the adjusting entry, which is an earned revenue debit. So if you go to our T account or our ledger, we would post fifty thousand, and then on our or on our trial balance, you will, you will be able to have a balance of 50. Then it would now be zero as of December 30. Because it will now go to our service revenue, which is 50,000. Okay? So if you have questions, just comment below. Then what is now an expense recognition principle? So expense recognition is also known as the matching principle which state that all expenses must be matched on the same accounting period as they are revenue they help to earn. For example, um, cost of goods sold. So usually we recognize cost of goods sold when the inventory was being sold or was being sold rather. So for this one, the usual explanation is, the usual example would be prepaid rent and prepaid insurance or cost of goods sold because Inventory is still inventory until it was being sold. So it become now part of the cost of goods sold. When we count, it's not anymore in there. So in our previous video trial balance or adjusting entry, there is one, one transaction which say that on January 11, 2020, they paid three months rental to Kurt 
for 30,000. So, the entry would now be debit prepaid rent and then credit cash, 30,000. So, that would be the entry on January 1, January 11, 2020. And on the first month, it would now be consumed on February 11, 2020, consumed 10,000. But we could, what? Probably will not be able to make an entry for that because it was just stated in the contract. Although in some software accounting now, there are already a pre-entry for this kind of transactions. So, so on, 11, on February 11, we only have 20,000 prepaid rent. But on March 11, it will again consume because it's three months until April 11, 2020. So, if we were not able to, to record this consume rent all through the period because we were not able to look over the contract, then what would now be the entry? Adjusting entry on December, we would now have rent expense 30000 and then credit prepaid expense 30000 Why? Because this rent are not any more asset because we already consume it. Okay? So... We recognize that we recognize the expense account because we already occupying the the place for the business. Okay, so what are the different types of adjusting? So there are three types of adjusting. We have the prepayment, the accruals, and the depreciation. So for prepayment, what are prepayment? So it, this one was also be like just like accrual, meaning that payments that are made before you receive the goods. For example. Prepaid rent, prepaid insurance because you are still on the bridge of occupying those. Or payment you receive before the services rendered. So these are the two examples we had previously. Next, we have the accruals. So accruals is also sometimes called as the peril. So these are when services are incurred but not yet paid. Example, are salaries payable or interest payable? Because normally in different businesses, there are different kind of payroll. It could be ending up on December 31 or some would be in the middle of the, the year and not literally on December 31. So we have to account for the unpaid unpaid salaries or the salaries that we are not yet able to, to pay because th these are already expenses for the period. And then the services rendered but no payment received. This will result to accounts receivable. That's why we have accounts receivable and accounts payable. It's because of this accrual method. Next, and the last one is the depreciation. So depreciation is a reduction in the value of asset with the passage of time due to a particular wear and tear or because of the use. Because take note, for example, when we buy our cell phone, over the period of time, we know that this cell phone would not be functioning the same as when we used to buy that. Okay, so that's why there are different kind of depreciation, which we would have another video presentation. But normally for this one, an example would be a straight line method. So this computer has a life of three years and a salvage value of four thousand. The end. The the entry before was on February 10, 2020. Lay bought a computer for twenty five thousand on account. Even if it's not yet paid because you are already using that, you need to depreciate for this one. So what's our formula? The, before on our previous video, we, I gave the formula, which is the acquisition cost, which is 25,000. We deduct the salvage value. Why do we, we deduct the salvage value? Because we presume that at the end of the life of this computer, we could so, sold this computer for 4,000. And then we divide it by the useful life of three years. Why? So, so that every year that we are using this computer, it would contribute for us to earn our income. Just like as accrual was telling us. And then the adjustment would now be depreciation expense 6,416.67 because it's only February and this one is for 11 months. And then we have the contra asset account, which is the accumulated depreciation that are also a real account that we would deduct in the balance sheet. So we, if you would check, uh, they said it should be one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Okay, next. So, these are some of the problems. So, please do solve and comment below so that I will be able to reply for the answer. Okay, good day.